Hello, is anybody out there? Hello, happy Saturday, everyone. I hope a few people can join me on this spontaneous crochet and conversation post. Hello, so I was just sitting down to do some crochet designing and I thought I would turn on the camera and say hello and see how everyone is. So if you are able to join me, great. If you're not, then you're hopefully you're catching this on replay. So hello, welcome. Okay. So today I am looking to design a little project, a small project, and um, I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, but I'm hoping to reveal it on September 3rd. So that is, um, I have to race against the clock to get it done. So I'm doing this. It'll just be on YouTube. It's not for a publisher. It's for you guys. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Lily. Wonderlust. Hello. So I'm um, looking through one of my favorite books. This is a Japanese stitch, stitch dictionary. And I'm looking for just the right stitch pattern that, um, that I'm going to make my special little project with. And I think I've already chosen my yarn. I have an idea in my head of what I want. Um, and so I'm looking for something that is um, not too open and lacy, but something that's not too dense and boring either. So isn't that always the, um, the dilemma? And I need a, a stitch pattern that will go with what I have in mind. Hmm. So I'm just leafing through my books. This is often how I start designing with looking through the stitch patterns and seeing how I want to change them, seeing if they are adaptable to the shape that I want. Um, you know, that kind of thing. What are you guys up to today on this Saturday afternoon? So I'm just kind of looking, what's, you know, what pops out at me? What do I think is going to end up a good overall shape? I kind of like the idea of doing something mosaic crochet. Um, so maybe I'll think about that. And I just don't know. So I might just have to start swatching and see what happens. So the yarn that I went diving into my stash, I, um, I definitely want something that is multiple colors. So like um, you're driving a truck. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, be careful. So just listen to my voice and don't watch what I'm doing. <laughs> so um, unless you're riding in a truck, in which case, Hey, uh, so I have to um, trying to figure out what to do next, Brenda. Yeah, absolutely. A crochet swimsuit. Well, let me give you a tip. <laughs> Not that you need it. You probably have it all figured out. Hey, Thea, I made a crochet swimsuit once. It was fun. It, was, it took a lot of thought and shaping and everything. Make sure you wear it in the shower first, okay? <laughs> Just a hint. <laughs> See how it holds up when it's wet <laughs> before you wear it to the beach. I'm just saying. Just take my experience. <laughs> anyway, I went uh, diving in my stash bucket. And I knew I wanted multiple colors and I decided that I was just looking for, um, um, so I was just going through my stash to find if I had any sets of two, like any, any two yarns or any one yarn that I have in two colors. So I went through my stash and I found this. So I don't even know if they make this anymore, but this is Classic Elite Provence. Classic Elite de Provence. And I used this yarn in my uh, book with Shelby Alaho, Crocheting Clothes Kids Love. And so it was a tank top for little girls and it was mostly yellow and it had purple. This is a purple. My shirt is blue, but this is like a purple, bluish purple, but definitely purple color. And so the, it was a tank top for a little girl and it was mostly yellow and it had purple accent, like purple trim and a purple flower and stuff. And so I found these two colors and I thought this is enough yarn to do the project that I am planning to do. And it's cotton, which I, the project I'm hoping to do that I'm not telling you that's a secret <laughs> would probably be smart in, in a, a cotton. So 
I pulled this out. So let's see what happens. So it is classical elite Provence and it's 100% mercerized Egyptian cotton, 205 yards per ball. I have a feeling that it looks like I've used some of the yellow already, but also I have to admit that when um, I find balls of yarn in my stash that are already taken off the hank and already spun into a ball, I'm more likely to use it because that one step of moving it from the hank into a ball, and I'm excited to start working. Sometimes I'm like, I'd rather pick something that I can start right away. So let me read some comments here. You have some special crochet, special yarn that's just for a crochet swimsuit. Excellent. I'd be curious to hear what it is because I think the yarn I used was a, it was definitely a stretchy yarn and I'm trying to think of what it was called. It was very elasticy, and I can't remember what it was called. And it was, this was years ago though. Like, and so, um, is it even in my old house? No, I think it was here. Anyway, like, even though it was stretchy and good for swimsuits, like you have to like, well, you probably already know this, but for the sake of everyone else who's never made a crocheted swimsuit before, you have to make it a, a Lee's Diva stretch yarn. No, I've not tried that one. This, the one I used was some, a different brand, but it was stretchy. You have to make the swimsuit like much smaller than you think you need to because it stretches <laughs> and the stretch is what's going to hold it up. Um, also, I found that the top really needs to go around the neck. Like it can't be a strapless thing because, well, maybe it's just me. <laughs> maybe it's just my shape that wouldn't hold it up, but you've got more chance of how holding that swimsuit up if it's got straps. And then, um, anyway, I hope it goes well. Maybe you will come up with a fantastic design that, uh, will revolutionize, um, crochet swimwear. So I hope you do. I hope you're the one who makes it all work. I could not make it work. Other people have made swimsuits with fantastic success. Um, so I'm sure you can too. It was, I only gave it one shot and, um, to, oh, here, here's an interesting tip for you. The reason I made the crocheted swimsuit in the first place was because I was under contract to write a book on crocheted, I would say, I would say intimates. I mean, it was like camis and um, not a, not like bra and underwear, but it was like camis and nightgowns. It was kind of like lingerie. And then the swimsuit was part of that. And I was under contract to write that. And I came up with maybe five projects and then they killed the idea. And so then the book never happened, but I was actively researching the projects that would go into that book. And I had already signed a contract and everything and then it did, didn't go through, but that was years ago. And it's okay, it all worked out. I, I, it was a hard task, it was a very hard task and I'm not sure I was up to it at the time. So let's see, you have some bright and neon self-striping colors that you wanna use in acrylic, okay. Yep. All right. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. So thank you everybody for jumping on and hitting the thumbs up already. I really appreciate it. So um, I have a little bit of time and I was, um, I'm coming, I want to come up with a design for you guys that I would like to, you know, and it's just like, I always have these big ideas and then it's really hard to implement them because I always, overestimate the amount of uh, time available that I will have to do it and I underestimate the time it'll take and so anyway I'm hoping that I don't make my work too hard like I hope I can just like get it done not the problem is I often will make things way more complicated than they need to be when you guys really don't want all that much complicated you just want fun projects that they, you can whip out and have success with and they don't have to be super fancy but I always try to make them super fancy and then it's like then people don't make them because they're too hard and then they're too hard to write if they're too fancy anyway so my goal is to make something quick and I know what I want to make and this cotton yarn I think is going to be it I wanted two colors I wanted cotton these were in my drawer they matched and I thought okay it's a sign let's do this so I think I will, I, I'm pretty, well, pretty sure that I can make a swatch out of this and the project and have enough. Worst case scenario, I'll make the swatch and then 
I'll um, rip it out and then make the final project. But I will see what happens. So let's see what's going to, well, let's see what's going to happen here. What are the rest of you guys doing on this lovely Saturday afternoon here in Ohio? It's actually um, a beautiful day outside. It's a good temperature and um, we haven't had a whole lot of the, the cooler temperatures until today. So it's been very, very hot, but um, now we're getting a nice day out there. So uh, you guys are inside crocheting. I wish I had spent more time crocheting today, but I just now I'm getting ready to sit down and do some work. And so I'm just going to swatch. I'm just going to play and see what happens. And I'm not going to tell you what I'm making until hopefully I reveal it on the third. <laughs> and if I don't make anything good, then it won't happen. Or if I don't make the deadline, then it won't happen. So I'm just going to sit here and play for a bit while we talk. Okay. So I'm still making the off to college blanket, even though my girl is indeed off to college um, as of this past Sunday. So I didn't make the deadline, but um, I still am planning to hustle, hustle all week long and hope to get her the blanket before it gets cold in Bloomington, Indiana. So that's the goal now is beating the weather. So I'm going to just see what happens here. So I'm working on that. I also made a hat um, for Mara to take to school. So you guys have all seen probably that video, the spruce hat on, on the YouTube channel. You guys have probably already seen that. It's available for purchase um, at Love Crafts and also on my website, ellengormley.com. And there's full videos for right and left handers if you're interested in that. And then I improvised a headband for her good friend, Piscasia. So I took a hat from the new book, One Skin Crochet, which I have one copy of, so I can't give any away until I get the rest of my freebies um, that then I can um, send them to you. I can um, sell them to you guys. I already have that list is full, so I'll keep you posted. So hang in there. Um, and then hopefully we'll get them situated and out. So I'm working on that. I, Mara has a new roommate at college. And, um, oh, okay, Thea, hang in there. See ya. Okay. Um, Mara has a new roommate at college, and she is from the South. And she probably has no idea what she's in for for in Indiana winter. So I would like to make her a hat. Um, as well so that they have she has a hat for winter not that her parents wouldn't do a wonderful job providing for her but I thought it would be a nice gesture to make her a hat um, since uh, they are going to be rooming together so anyway so let's see what happens so I know I wanted to make stripes but I don't think that I can like think and design and, and and stuff while I'm talking. So I'm just going to stitch randomly for now. And then I will go back and change my mind later and add in some stripes. That's probably what I'll do. But I am just working on a little triangle at the moment. And I will change some stitches up later and look at a stitch pattern later. But right now, I think I would like to just make a plain triangle um, and make the shape that I'm looking for and then go back and um, change up the stitch pattern to fit that shape um, for the actual project. I think that's how I'm going to design it this time. Um, do I do I play any sport or dance? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a runner. I run. I don't run well. I don't run fast, but I do it and I do it anyway. And um, I've been doing that for eight years. Has it been eight years? So I was not a runner and I, I call myself a late onset runner. I was not a runner. I did not like running. I hated running. I avoided running. Um, I had been doing jazz or so I was, a, I played sports in, in school in grade school. I played sports in high school. Um, I did years of jazz or size. Um, and then after the kids came along, I, oh, I did jazzercise for years. And then I thought I needed to get, find an exercise workout that was quicker and took up less time than going to jazzercise and driving there and stuff. 
So um, I started running. What is ACRO? Um, I don't know. Did we talk about ACRO? Um, anyway, let's see. She, yes, she likes her roommate so far. Thank you very much. They seem to be getting along well. She's in a what I she's in one of the um, learning communities. So everybody. She had to apply to that floor of her dorm, and the, that wing, that floor of her dorm has 50 um, residents, and Mara is one of them, and they're all from the same department. They're all, they, they're all part of the um, global Hamilton Luger School of International Studies, so they're all part of global studies students, and they, they all applied, and they all um, they were accepted into this living learning community. So she, her roommate and all the kids on the floor are um, very, very similar. They all love music. They all play instruments. They all speak multiple languages. They all are, many of them are from um, outside of the United States. They're, they're very, they've all are pretty well traveled, you know, and they all like similar stuff. They're all interested in similar stuff. And so, um, her roommate and she seemed to be clicking really well. So I'm really thrilled about that. She seems like a really nice girl and her parents were very nice. We met them when um, on move in day and had dinner with them. And so um, it's good. It's hopefully, you know, it's only been five days. <laughs> First couple of days were rough, <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. You know, we're, uh, we're going to get through. So anyway, so, oh, here comes the dog. Here comes the dog. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, everybody, Hobie's making an appearance. Hello, Hobie. Oh, my goodness. What have you been doing? That's my yarn. That's my yarn. Oh, and there, oh, there he goes. <laughs> so that was it. Hey, Hobie, he made, a, uh, he made a cameo appearance. I don't know what he's going to do now. <laughs> so, anyway. So I'm just going to crochet. I do need to work on her blanket at some point. Can you guys hear Tom's lawnmower out there? I'm sorry. Like, it seems like really the best time for me to get on live stream videos is when he is mowing the lawn <laughs> because I can hear that when the lawnmower turns off. So I know when he's coming back in and he's going to interrupt. And so as long as the lawnmower is going, <laughs> then I know that I'm free to talk with you guys as long as I want. Um, so I like the uh, privacy of being able just to talk to you guys without people listening. I think uh, Patrick is upstairs with a buddy playing video games. You know, they aren't coming down for hours. <laughs> so um, it all works out. Anyway, so I'm just going to stitch away and kind of work on the shape that I'm looking for for this project. Then I'm not telling you what it is yet in case you just joined me. It's just kind of spontaneous watching. <laughs> hey, did you guys happen to um, check out my the video that I put up on Wednesday? It was a video of an unboxing of Barocco's new fall and winter yarn. So check that out if you haven't already seen it. There is a poll option where you can vote for which ones of the yarns you'd like to see me swatch on camera. So I can't wait to see uh, what the results of that are. And I'm making a triangle so far, just a double crochet. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I suddenly got tired. Sorry about that. Um, and I think that this is not the right angle that I want, because if I continue this shape, I think it's too pointy and not wide enough. I think I'd, I think I'd rather have something a little wider. So I think I need to, I think I need to add more stitches sooner. Do I want something more square? Do I want something more acute? I don't know. I guess I think I want something more square. So I guess I need to add more stitches because right now this is not a square. Like, uh, It's like it's like short of a of square. It's not. I need I need more stitches. So if I put it up against a piece piece of paper which has a squared corner, I can see the amount of stitches here on this side that are missing. 
in order to make it more square. So I think I will try again. I will try again. So I need to add more stitches. I need to add more stitches than what I was doing. So let's try again. Try, try, try again. And you know me, lost my hook already. Oh, there it is. You have a question, you're 13 and you're still trying to figure out how to crochet amigurumi. Do I have to, have I ever crocheted that? Yes, amigurumi is, um, you, most often you need to, to do a follow a pattern because uh, there's a specific, well, when you're making a spear, like a little globe, a ball, like you need to increase the stitch, the number of stitches and a good amount to make it very spherical, very ball like. I do not have any patterns for amigurumi. Um, some of my favorite designers for crocheted amigurumi are, let me see, Stacy Trock, Stacy Trock, and Planet June. Those are a couple of my favorite designers for crocheted amigurumi. So you can look for them for patterns. And if we, um, I don't know, I guess I just haven't really had much luck designing them. I think people who do it well do a fantastic job of making the faces look so, with such personality, but I've, I've never really um, tried really hard at designing amigurumi. Um, I did do some, little videos on my YouTube channel under special stitches about an invisible increase and an invisible decrease so that you can uh, use them specifically for amigurumi and not create um, holes in your work as typical um, stitches would do when you like when you put multiple stitches in one spot and increase, then the spot where you put them in opens up and it leaves a little bit of a hole. So Anyway, videos on my special stitches playlist for invisible single crochet and uh, invisible increase uh, single crochet and invisible decrease single crochet. So that makes it a little bit less holy. Okay, so I hope that you look up Stacy Track and Planet June and see if you can find some things that you enjoy there. Let's see. Uh, let's see. You were surprised that Barocco is in Rhode Island? Yes, yes. It's a really um, beautiful little office. Um, I seem to remember that their office was on like Tupperware Drive or something. It was something Tupperware. Was the neighborhood Tupperware? I think it was on like a street called Tupperware. And, um, and I actually got to visit and it was really cool. And I really will remember that forever. So bye, Brenda. Good to see you. So, um, they had like, when you walk into their offices, it was like a little ante room and, you know, pretty little lobby. And then they had offices and really they, I don't know how many people they employed, but like the design and like design and marketing and staff and the owner of the company, there's like maybe, I don't know, a dozen total, maybe, maybe not even that many. And then they had like, um, like warehouse in the back, like where the big tall shelves of yarn and big machines that would spin the yarn into hanks and balls and um, big machines that would um, make color cards, which I don't know if you guys know what those are, but it's like when they would sell the yarn to yarn stores and stuff, they make these cards. And I have a, a bunch of them upstairs. I should bring some down, but they're like, it's like one card that would fit in a binder and it would have like the yarn name on the top. And then it would have like little like fringe, little fringe of every color in that yarn, like maybe five or six strands of fringe of each color so that you could see all the colors of one yarn on a card that would fit in a binder. So when I was at the magazine, I had like a dozen binders of like different yarn companies. And so when I would choose um, which designs, I'd get all the designs that were going to go in the magazine. And then I would go to the binders and pick like the, the, the yarn, the actual yarn that would be made in the pattern. 
So like if a designer sketched something and sent me a swatch, but I didn't like the yarn or I thought it would look better in a different yarn or um, the yarn was discontinued or um, I already had too many of that color or I had too many from that yarn company already, then I would get out the binders and be like, okay, there's Barocco, Universal, Red Hearts, uh, Peyton's, um, Classic Elite, Cascade, Plymouth, you know, I'd have all these binders out and I would just start searching. And so like if the swatch needed something that was wool and maybe something that was DK weight, then I would go and search all the binders and find um, which company I hadn't used yet or which one I wanted to get to know better or one that I had good experience with and I knew would make a great sweater or rate whatever project and um, find. And, and so the cards were all in those binders. And so um, at Barocco, when I went to tour in their way, warehouse, they had machines that cut yarn into the little fringe that and that glued on to the cards so that those could go to um, yarn stores and, you know, they're like salespeople would take them to the yarn store so they could see and pick which colors to buy. And those cards would also go to me, like when I was an editor, so that I could choose yarn colors and choose the right yarn to go in projects that would go in the magazine and promote their yarn. So anyway, Barocco had a machine like that in their warehouse to like cut and make those yarn cards. Um, so it was really cool. It was just really neat to see... Um, you know, the, the ton of yarn that they had and the variety and how they were developing new yarns and they had design staff. Um, and I'm sure a lot of the companies have the same, um, you know, set up, but that's the only one I got to visit. So that's what I remember. That's the one I'll tell you about. Anyway, so I have added more stitches and I think I'm getting closer to the squared shape now. So I'm gonna keep going and see if this is the shape that I wanna make. And I might use it as a little bit of a template to um, then choose like a fancier stitch pattern and uh, see if I can make it in the right shape. So let's see. Hey, Carlene, good to see you, hello. So I'm just sitting here swatching away for a secret project that I hope that I will be able to deliver to you all on September 3rd, but don't hold your breath because life has been very busy. So how are you? Excuse me. So yeah, so I'm gonna just swatch away here while we talk. I don't think I have the brain power to be able to design and talk at the same time. So I'm just doing plain old double crochet right now. And I will hopefully change this into a different stitch pattern later. And I'm not telling you exactly what it is just yet, which is good because then you won't be disappointed. <laughs> you won't get your expectations too high. Let's put it that way. So um, for all of you who are wondering, some of you have sent me notes. My stepfather is doing pretty well. I saw him today. I went up to Dayton and saw him today and my stepmother, and I want another stitch on the other end of this. And so um, he's doing pretty well. He's still in a rehab hospital. He's not home. I have no idea when he's going to be home, but, um, you know, he's hanging in there. So that's as good as it gets for now. So he is alert. He um, cannot speak. He, uh, I don't know, nursing homes are confusing to me because he has had a buildup of wax in his ear and he can't hear and they won't fix it. Like they have to wait till a special ENT nose, ear, nose and throat doctor comes and takes care of it. And I'm like, isn't like the day-to-day -day maintenance of a person kind of what a nursing home is supposed to do? But apparently no, apparently they will not do that. And they also will not clip people's nails for them, um, toenails for them. So like, like, but he won't let me do it. And I don't know what I'm doing to irrigate somebody's ear. I don't want to touch. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to hurt him. So anyway, we're looking forward to that. He can't hear me because of that. And I'm so excited to have the ear, nose and throat doctor finally come and we'll pay a premium for the doctor's expertise to clean out his ears so that he can hear me. Um, just like we paid a podiatrist to, chew, to trim his toenails, which 
I would have done for him and I offered to do for him, but my stepfather wouldn't let me. And so anyway, so instead we pay, we have to wait till the, the, uh, the podiatrist comes to the nursing home and does the rounds and takes care of all the people because the nursing home won't do it either. So anyway, I digress. Praying for him. Thank you. Um, yeah, you did uh, the trip to college. Um, you missed a little bit of it, but I'll say a little bit more. So it was a long day. <laughs> so it was like a 14 hour day. It's like almost three hours to Indiana from to Bloomington from where we are. And um, we got there at like noon and I'm suddenly yawning. So I'm so sorry. Hold on just one second. I'm so tired. So we got there at like noon and had lunch and then moved her in. And it was like the hottest day of the year. Of course, they said it's always like either raining, storming or hottest day of the year. So when we moved her in, it was the hottest day of the year. And then like two days later, when the all campus moved in, it rained. <laughs> so I felt bad for them. I'd rather have it be hot than have it be raining because they like make you put everything like unload the car on the cur and put all her stuff on the curb and then drive the car away and then you're like moving stuff and so stuff stays on the curb while you take trips going up to the dorm room and there's a security guard there and it's fine. Everybody's doing the same thing, but um, I'm glad her stuff didn't get wet and ruined um, sitting on the curb where I guess that's what happened. Um, um, so so I, I guess that's what happened. You know, stuff on the curb is getting wet, you know, when it rains. I don't know how they deal with that. So I just would hate things to be ruined while they're trying to, to move in. So it was good. So we um, moved her all in. It really didn't take that long to move in because we brought Patrick with us. So between the four of us, we moved things very quickly. And that, and we skipped the elevator and just did the stairs to the fourth floor because there was a line for the elevator. So I did use the elevator once for a couple of heavy things. And then other than that, we just did the stairs. And um we were done by dinner time. So we had dinner, like her, her learning community and the parents and stuff. We all had one big dinner together that they had sponsored for us or ready for us. And then we went home and we got home at like 10 o'clock at night. And Patrick and me and Tom, we had to go to work and school the next day. And uh, we were exhausted. But um, uh, she seems to be doing well. She seems to be adjusting. She's enjoying her learning community, all her friends are very, very similar. They all like have the same interests. They're all going to be in the same department on her wing of her floor. So um, they had to apply to get into that unit um, and write essays and stuff and get accepted into that unit. And there's like a waiting list of 250 people. So she's now realizing just how honored she is to be part of this learning community. Anyway, so... Brad's mom, two buddies and closer to you. You work as a transcriptionist for a podiatrist. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. Um, hello. Happy Saturday to you, too. Crochet me pink Kelly. <laughs> so I'm just going to sit here and swatch away. Let me make sure I'm doing the same thing on one end as I am on the other. And I am holding this up against a now then I probably have a little too many stitches. I don't know holding this up against a corner because I think I do want a 90 degree corner on this, but I'm just playing and we will see later. So yeah, her, Oh, wow. Well, it's not there yet. Carlene. I was just telling them the room does look really good. She, um, thank you. She chose like a pink pale pink theme, which was really kind of shocking because she's not really a pink girl, but she chose a very calm, like a baby pink theme for her room. And, um, the off to college blanket is sitting right here next to me. Not done yet because she decided that she wanted it bigger. So then we rushed and did a whole lot more squares and now I'm still putting them together and I haven't had time to do it yet because I also went to full-time work recently, as you know. And so um, now the goal is to get the blanket to her in time for um, it to get cold in Indiana, which could be any time. You never know. So I am being, need to beat the clock on that. And I guess I could be doing that right now instead of this, but I got inspired to do this. And I have a specific reason why I want to do a deadline of, of September 3rd for this small project. So um, <laughs> I guess I'm having trouble with follow through. Maybe if I finish her blanket, then reality will set in that she's actually 
off to college now. Maybe. Maybe that's the true reason why I'm avoiding finishing her project because then it'll be real. Maybe. Anyway. Yes, pink is calming as long as it's not Pepto-Bismol pink. Absolutely. Now, this is like a, a real soft baby pink, maybe even a little bit lighter than baby pink. So, yeah, I think it'll be good. It'll be fine. And she... um. She has her cello there and she has some pictures on the wall and I'll have to show you. Oh, you got to go, Carlene. Okay. Well, have a good, oh no, the Lee, Lily's crochet said, okay, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Okay. See you. Thanks for stopping by. Let me show you a picture if I can find one. So let's see here. And did I put it in my favorites? So, it, but it was cute because um, Patrick came with us and Okay, so they were, um, Mara is so cute. She's so funny. She, she knows that Tom does not like sit still very well. He's a very busy man. He's always like fixing things. He, he does not just sit down and rest much at all. And um, so she very smartly, very astutely assigned Tom to help hang pictures. So here is, here is uh, Tom Patrick. Let's get the glare. They here's Tom and Patrick hanging pictures in her dorm room. There you go. And um, so I just snapped this little picture and I thought it was cute of them like hanging pictures in her room for her. So I thought that was brilliant of her to assign them a task. And um, so then here she is like unpacking her stuff. And then um here she is. Tom hung up some Christmas lights for her so that she would have them in because uh, we didn't have a light fixture over there in the corner of her bed. And she wanted to bring Christmas lights. So he just strung them in a way with these like hooks on the wall that, that it's kind of drapey, kind of like reminded me of the 70s. You know, when you have that like chain lamp, you know, that like you saw the chain go up the side of the wall and then the lamp hung over the top. It reminded me a little bit about that. But it's anyway. So her comforter is this, let's see, you can barely see it. It's like this baby floral, baby pink floral with kind of a grayish green background. Anyway, so very calming and hopefully she will be very calm there. <laughs> so anyway, I think it's going, I think she's doing well. She's um, she's calling me, texting me a little less frequently each day. And um, so she sent me this picture of her with her Starbucks. <laughs> so she had like a cafe mocha in one hand and a Aussie refresher in the other hand. So she was in heaven. <laughs> you know how teenagers are with their Starbucks. So I think she's, um, she's texting me just a little less often each day. And so hopefully that means... Um, she's doing the work that she's supposed to do with joining in and getting settled and um, <sighs> leaving home. So we're hanging in there. So it's good. It's what's supposed to happen, right? <laughs> so anyway, ah, uh, yeah. So as soon as I got this child off to college, you know, school hasn't even started yet. It starts on Monday, but got her in and she's been in for five or six days, six days now. Um, I get Patrick to school and he's a junior in high school and they start hitting us with all the college stuff for him now. Like, Oh my gosh. So I've got the timeline of all of the college search activities um, that they just sent in an email the other day. And um, there's a lot of college preparation that happens junior year and over the summer of junior between junior and senior year. And then, of course, the big applications and um, decision making process in fall of senior year. So they are they're on it. <laughs> Not going to let any grass grow under their feet. They are got to make it happen. So um, it's like, oh, can I just breathe in between? Luckily, they're two years apart. So um like if they were just one, well, they're 19 months apart, but in school, they're two years apart. So if they, if he was just a few months older, like we would be, he would be applying to colleges right now. And it's just like, oh, 
like that's fast. Like I need a, like a breather. I need to kind of recover from sending one child off to college before I have to do it again with my next. So, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes, but still we're getting mail college mail for him every day, every day. There's more mail for him. So, um, yeah, I feel like anyway, I'm playing with this little square and I think it's, I need to add some more stitches or it's going to lose its 90%, uh, 90 degree angle here. Yep. Um, but I wish I had done it in, and um, what do you call them? Linked stitches. I just am in love with linked stitches lately. So check out my um, special stitches playlist. If you don't know what linked stitches are, there's a linked double crochet and that's also the crown of the hat. Oh, I had to show you the blue one, the crown of the hat. That was the spruce hat that I made for Mara. And I also made a spruce hat for Piscasia and here it is in blue. So there's the Tunisian linked double crochet uh, crown. And then here's the basket weave body. And I just need to finish off the end and weave it in. And this is the hat for Piscasia. So um, her school colors are, her Mara's best friend um, is going to a school with blue as their main color. And so Mara's hat is crimson for crimson and cream for Indiana. And so here is the one for Xavier University where Piscasia is going. So, and she has a slightly larger set of hair than I do, Piscasia does. So I made this a little bit bigger, so it's too big for me, but it will accommodate Piscasia's um, more voluminous ha hair than I have. <laughs> so I gotta get that done for her. But that'll just take 10 minutes when I actually do it, but haven't actually done it. <laughs> so I guess I ought to knock that out and get that off my to-do list, don't you think? Isn't it funny? I'm like 99% done and haven't finished it. And it's been sitting here for two weeks. I guess it's the creative in me. Like I just can't seem to finish it off. Um, hi from Denver, Gail. Happy you found me on YouTube. I'm happy you found me too. Hello. You're interested in that stitch book you have. What's the name? So this stitch book, this stitch book, it's a Japanese book. I don't know the name of it. 200. <laughs> I don't know the name of it. The stitch book. If you're talking about my sti special stitches playlist, that is on this YouTube channel. Under playlist, there's um, special stitches playlist. There's right and left handed. And um, I have, a, unless you're talking about my new book, my new book is one skein crochet. Let me grab the last copy I have before. Hopefully, my publisher sends me the rest of them that I'm supposed to get. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. I'm coming. I'm coming back. I promise. Okay. So here's my my new book, One Skein Crochet. It's up on Amazon right now, and um, it is shipping or. It's set to publish on um, September 17th. Hopefully people who pre-ordered it will get it sooner than that. I'm still holding my breath, hoping that I get my um, box of copies so that I can mail them out to all the people who pre-ordered signed copies from me. And so one skein crochet. So scarf on the back, purse on the front, how to use up a whole skein to make a complete project. Here's a scarf and a hat. So it's fun. Here's a, here's a, a cowl and a cowl, sort of. Okay. Everything is designed to use up an entire skein of yarn. There's a blanket and a hat. So I hope you guys love it. I'm so in love with the photography, though. I feel like they did such a great job. It's so much fun. Such fun photography. Anyway, so one skein crochet. So stay tuned about that. Let's see. Maybe Indiana U will give you a quantity discount. Oh my gosh. Yeah, if Patrick ends up going to Indiana and he literally just got a brochure from Indiana with his name on it today. And I was just like, <laughs> I can't afford it. <laughs> it's like it's bad enough sending one kid out of state 
Um, but it's where she belonged. It's where she really needed to be. But oh my gosh, sending a kid out of state with out of state tuition is just like, oh my gosh, it's giving me a headache just thinking about it. It's like, breathe. God wants her there, he will provide. <laughs> and I think he does want her there because we keep getting all these signs that that's where she belongs. So it will be okay. I think Patrick, though, he's just a whole different personality. And he, um, I think he's going to stay in state and he might even stay local. Mara wanted to go away and she wanted to go big. I think Patrick wants to stay local and go smaller. So I, I whatever it works best for him is fine with me. If he... If he, if he wants to go to Indiana and that ends up being the right place for him, then we'll make it happen. But I really don't think he's, um, I don't really don't think he's going to go very far away from home. Miami of Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. He totally could go there and I could see him there. It's a much, it's a beautiful school. Um, it's much smaller than Indiana. It's like 45 minutes from the house. Like he could live there. I mean, I mean, Mara could have gone there practically for free. I mean, with all the scholarships and stuff, like, it's like, oh my God, Mara, can you go there? But they didn't have, they didn't have her languages. They didn't, they had one class in Korean and Mara is majoring in Korean at Indiana. Like, and Miami only had like, I mean, she's already passed that. Like, I don't they didn't, they just didn't have, they just don't have her major. They just didn't have what she needed. And nobody really in Ohio did except Ohio state. And we, and she just wasn't clicking with Ohio state. So she clicked with Indiana. So that's where she will go and we will work it out. But Patrick is more likely to go like business or something. And so Miami of Ohio would be a great choice for him. So he might end up, you know, being a Red Hawk, you know, and I could crochet up more red things, <laughs> which would be convenient. <laughs> so um, anyway, so yes, Miami of Ohio might be a good fit for him. Xavier University might be a good fit for him, um, which is where Pascasi is going, where the blue hat is. And um, our other, Mara's got two um, cousins who are the exact same age. They graduated from high school together at this, in the same class. And um, one of them, Natalie, is at Xavier University. And the other one, Elena, is at University of Cincinnati. So I can see Patrick going to either one of those schools. I could see him going to Miami of Ohio as well. He might also, um, I don't know, we'll just wait and see what is right for him. So we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Choose a yarn based on my yarn stash. Sorry, Patrick, you can't go there because I don't have that color. <laughs> and actually, it's kind of funny because, um, you know, with all the red that I had in my stash, none of them was the right red. <laughs> so, so the crimson and cream for Indiana, it's like, I still don't order yarn like I had other red yarn but I didn't have the right red it's like no mom it's a little bit more crimson so the first hat that I made in red was the prototype for um the, the back to school the spruce hat um the prototype was like more tomatoey red and I made it and I showed it to my husband and he's like yeah but the color's really more crimson <laughs> like okay Okay, I get it. I have to remake the, the hat in the right color red. And it is important. You know, don't get me wrong. I just think it's funny that like out of all the yarn I have in this house, I did not have the right color red. <laughs> so yeah, tell him, sorry, Patrick, <laughs> you have to only go where I have a sufficient yarn stash to make you a hat and scarf. <laughs> and well, and for one for me too, and when I visit, right? <laughs> so anyway, well, I guess I better start thinking about dinner too. You know, it's 7.30 here already, but it's still light out. So I always forget about dinner until it's dark and uh, Tom comes in from mowing the grass or something because he likes to be out until it gets dark. And then we eat dinner really late. Um, so I guess it's about time I actually start thinking about dinner. Um, I'm just still looking at this. I'm still just trying to figure out if this is what I want. And I feel like it It feels like it needs to go wider. I feel like it needs a wider angle. Like, I, like maybe like that instead of 
So I will just have to keep swatching, won't I? And while I'm swatching, I really should be working on that back to off to the college blanket, huh? And I should finish that hat. <laughs> maybe I'm ADD too, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe I'm just a distracted crafter. Anyway, thank you all so much for spending the last 50 minutes of your time with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you have enjoyed uh, laughing at my uh, predicament. And uh, I will hope to get you a new pattern by September the 3rd. That's my goal. And I'll keep you posted on the books. At this point, I have no information, new information that you don't also have because the whole transition of having random penguin house, random house, Random House Penguin, not Random Penguin House. <laughs> um, buying Interweave, like they, it's taking them some time to figure out um, what they're doing. So I've not gotten any new information at all. So I don't have any more information than you have. So I will keep you posted as information comes in. And certainly as soon as the books arrive, I will be um, crazily emailing all of you um, who are on the list is to set that up so that I can get those sent out to you as soon as possible. So I guess that's about all. So off to have dinner, the three of us tonight. So anyway, have a great Saturday evening, everybody. Thank you so much for spending time with me. See you next time.